Hello, everyone. I'm Shi Hao from Penn State University. Welcome to my talk. In this talk, I will present our work, Who Goes First? Detecting Go Concurrency Bias via Message Ordering. This is a joint work with Zi Heng, Yu, my advisors Lin Hai, and Hong. As a young programming language, Go has already been used in many famous applications, including Docker, Kubernetes, and many others. Go is designed for efficient and reliable concurrent programming. For this purpose, Go provides lightweight threads called Go routines, and also advocates using channels to explicitly pass messages for thread communication, with the belief that message passing is less error-prone than the shared memory. Unfortunately, there are still many concurrency bugs in Go programs. For example, many concurrency bugs are found in Docker. Moreover, Channels may be more error prone than mutex. For example, a recent empirical study reports that 36% more blocking bugs are caused by misuse of channels. Let me show you a concurrency bug in Docker. The parent group team makes an indirect function call. The calling function creates two unbuffered channels and returns the two channels to the caller. Moreover, the callee creates a child group team. The child routine first calls a function, then it depends on the return value to send a message to one of the two graded channels. In the meanwhile, the parent routine blocks that select statement until it either receives a message from files after one second or receives a message from one of the two return channels. If the message from file comes earlier, the parent routine merely logs the timeout and then returns from the current function. After that, no other groutines have references to the two returned channels, and those no groutines can receive messages from the two channels anymore. Both of the two channels are unbuffered. A sending operation on them does not proceed until another groutine pulls a message from them. Therefore, in this scenario, the child team blocks at one of the sending operations endlessly, causing a blocking bug. Unfortunately, no existing techniques can effectively detect channel-related bugs similar to this one for three reasons. First, concurrency bug detection techniques designed for traditional programming languages only monitor shared memory access and shared memory primitives. They do not consider and analyze channel operation. Second, existing static techniques designed for Go cannot resolve complex indirect function call. Third, Existing dynamic techniques for Go merely report triggered concurrency bugs, and then they cannot increase the chance of exposing concurrency bugs. We propose to build a dynamic technique to detect generated bugs in Go programs to avoid fundamental limitation of static analysis. We focus on concurrent messages that are unique to the Go languages. Since the processing order of concurrent messages is non-deterministic, Programmer must guarantee a Go program works well under all possible processing orders. However, due to huge number of possible orders, programmers may miss some orders and bring in channel-related bugs. Therefore, we decide to mutate the processing orders of concurrent messages in order to detect channel-related bugs. Although intuitions are straightforward, we need to tackle three challenges to build a practical tool. First. How to identify concurrent messages? Without processing information about concurrent messages, we may waste our efforts on messages with the existing happens before relation. Second, a Go program may have a tremendous number of possible message orders. How can we identify and prioritize orders more likely to trigger bugs? Third, when a channel-related bug is triggered, how can we effectively capture the bug? We build a tool named GFAS to effectively detect generated concurrency bugs in Go programs. GFAS leverages the select statements to identify concurrent messages, applies the fuzzing to pinpoint and prioritize suspicious orders, and contains a novel synthesizer to capture triggered bugs. We conduct several experiments to evaluate GFAS. In total, GFAS detects 184 previous unknown bugs in famous Go open source software. We report all the bugs to the programmers. Programmers have already confirmed 124 bugs as real bugs and fixed 67 of them based on our reporting. We compare GFAS with the state of the art and it can detect significantly more bugs. 
This is the outline of my talk. I've finished the introduction part. Now let's look at how GFAS identifies concurrent messages and enforces their processing orders. If two channel operations do not have a happens before relation, we consider they are concurrent channel operations and they are processed the messages are concurrent messages. It is challenged to determine whether any two channel operations are concurrent. Since there are too many synchronization operations in a Go program and it is difficult to analyze their interactions, GFAS focuses on select statements, which allow one girl team to wait for multiple channel operations. These semantics indicate that the channel operation of the same select can happen simultaneously. Go programs commonly use selects, and those GFAS can pinpoint numerous concurrent channel operations. We use a sequence of selected keys to represent the processing order of concurrent messages. We statically assign a unique ID for each select and allocate a local index for each distinct case of a select. A concurrent message order can be represented with a sequence of tuples. For each tuple, its first element represents the select ID, second element represents the number of cases in the select, and the last element represents the local index of a selected case. For example, if we assume the ID of the select is 0, and one program run goes over the select cries and choose the second cases for the two executions, then the order can be encoded like this. GFAS conducts code transformation to enforce a given order. GFAS replaces each select statement with a switch statement. Function fetch order decides which cases to prioritize for the select based on the input order. For a select with n cases, we will replace it with a switch with n cases and the default clause. The ice case of the switch is to prioritize the ice concurrent messages waited for the select. The default is used when the order is specified for the select. To prioritize the ice message, we implement the body of the ice switch case as a select with two cases. The first case in the same as the ice select case, the same channel operation and the same body. The second one is a timer with a period t, and the body is the same as the original select. After the transformation, the S message is prioritized for selection with the T period. If the message does not come before the timeout, the execution forks back to the original select, and GFAS leaves the program to choose any message. We design the timer to avoid introducing false deadlocks, which cannot happen in real executions. Here we show the whole switch for the select. Next, I will discuss how GFAS identifies and prioritizes suspicious orders. GFAS applies the fuzzing method to continuously identify suspicious message orders and detect bugs. Specifically, GFAS maintains a query for exercised orders. It sequentially fetches the orders from the query and mutates each of them to generate new orders. Then, GFAS forces the test program to handle concurrent messages in each new order to detect bugs. At the same time, GFAS collects the runtime feedback to decide whether an exercise order is interesting enough for further exploration. If so, GFAS adds the exercise order to the order queue. We consider an exercise order is interesting if it triggers a new interleaving of channel operations and reaches a new channel state, such as a new channel creation, a new channel closing, or a new maximum fullness of a buffer channels. We do not devote equal effort to each exercise order. Instead, we can build a score for each order using this formula, which considers the trigger channel interleavings, the number of distinct channels created, the number of distinct channels closed, and the sum of maximum channel fullness. GFAS generate more new orders for an order with a higher score. Next, let's discuss how to detect triggered concurrency bugs. Our synthesizer focuses on detecting channel-related blocking bugs, because Go runtime can capture channel-related non-blocking bugs, such as sending a message to a closed channel or closing an already closed channel. 
we hybridize two methods to dynamically check the runtime information. One is conduct source-to-source -source instrumentation. The second one is to modify the Go runtime. GFAST dynamically maintains two data structures and leverages their contents to detect blocking bugs. Go info records which channels a Go team can refer to. Chain info checks which Go team holds a reference to a channel. We update the contents of the two data structures when the Go team gains or lost a channel reference. Let's take a look at previous bug example. When the parent Go team creates the two channels, GFAS updates the two data structure to show that the parent Go team gains a reference to a channel CH and a channel error CH. Later, when the child Go team is created, GFAS updates the two data structures since the two channels are shared to the child Go team. When a function parent returns, it loses the reference to the channel CH and error CH. GFAS updates the two data structure to reflect this fact. Then, when the child Go team conducts the sending operation on channel CH, GFAS refers the two data structures and finds no other Go teams holds a reference to CH, and those no Go teams can unblock the child. Those GFAS detects a bug. Next, I will discuss the implementation and evaluation. We implement GFAS using Go 1.16. We use the SSA package to do the static analysis and AST package for source-to-source -source transformation. We also change the Go runtime to check some dynamic information. We evaluate GFAS using recent versions of the following seven famous open source software, writing Go. All of them are popular. Based on GitHub stars, most of them are ranked in the top 20. All of the applications are large software with hundreds of thousands of lines of code. They can help confirm GFAS capability to analyze large software. In total, GFAS detects 184 previous unknown bugs. Among them, 170 are blocking bugs, where one Go team blocks at the synchronization operation and cannot make process anymore. All these blocking bugs are detected by our sanitizer. 92 bugs render the buggy routine is blocked at the channel operation. 61 blocking bugs makes the buggy routine block at the select and wait for multiple channel operations. 17 bugs leaves the routine blocking when using a range to pull messages from a channel. A range keyword can drain a chain in a loop and it keeps iterating the loop until the channel is closed. GFAS also finds 14 non-blocking bugs. NBK stands for non-blocking bug. And 14 non-blocking bugs includes panic or fatal errors caused by new interface conversion sending to a closed channel or accessing an array using an out-of-bound index. GFAS reports 12 false positives due to imprecise static analysis. We compare GFAS with the state-of-the-art Go Concurrency Bug Detector, GCatch. Since fuzzing is a continuous process, we run GFAS for 3 hours. While GCatch is a static tool, we use it to analyze all packages that can be compiled. Overall, GFAS detects 85 bugs in the first 3 hours. GCatch detects 25 bugs. GFAS detects significantly more bugs than GCatch. Among the 25 bugs captured by GCatch, GFAS also detects 5 of them in the first 3 hours. GFAS misses the remaining 20 bugs for 4 reasons. First, 6 more bugs can be detected by GFAS, but they require longer fuzzing time. Second, 4 bugs cannot be triggered by message reordering. Third, for 8 bugs, we do not have test inputs to execute the buggy code. Fourth, Two bugs are missed due to GFAS implementation. Although GFAS is effective, it does have limitations and cannot capture all Go concurrency bugs. For runtime overhead, average overhead of GFAS is three times. For sanitizer, the average overhead is around 30%, which is comparable with widely used sanitizer, such as address sanitizers and thread sanitizers. It is promising to adopt the sanitizer separately in another scenarios.
To understand the merits of each GFAST component, we run GFAST on GRPC for 12 hours using four different settings. One setting is the full featured version of GFAST. The other three disable one component of GFAST. The figure shows how the number of detected blocks changes over the execution time. X axis is the execution time, and Y axis is the number of unique blocks. First, the full feature version of GFAST detects 12 unique blocks. Second, if we disable the use of the execution feedback, GFAST detects 4 blocks in 12 hours. Third, if we disable the synthetizer, the go runtime can help detect 3 blocks. Fourth, if we do not record concurrent messages, GFAST does not detect any bugs, and the full feature version detects most bugs, demonstrating the rationale of GFAST's component. As a conclusion, we built GFAST, an effective dynamic Go concurrency bug detector, by reordering concurrent messages using execution feedback to prioritize suspicious orders and proposing a novel synthesizer to capture blocking bugs missed by the go runtime. GFAST detects 184 previous unknown bugs in famous Go applications. In the future, we plan to explore other methods to explore Go program's execution states for more bugs and design novel analysis algorithm to identify more concurrent messages. Here is our GitHub project link and its QR code, and my contact. Welcome to ask me or open issues at any time if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions?